There is a ton of mathematics on the CFA exams, but not all of it is really that difficult. Some of it doesn't go much further than ninth grade algebra one. I went through all of my notes from all three years of the CFA program, especially the notes that contain formulas that I needed and I learned to be able to pass those exams. And I'm gonna tell you exactly which formulas and which types of math were used and necessary to get through it. And there was a lot to look at. A lot of us had statistics in high school and then a more advanced version of that in college. And if you picked up on some of the more basic statistical concepts, you don't necessarily need to know the advanced stuff. You're gonna at least remember all of the statistical concepts tested in the CFA programs. There is a lot of standard deviation, variance, and correlations, coefficient of variation, and then all the other respective calculations that you can do with those concepts that I think were some more introductory statistics type topics, but they're all over the CFA exam. There is a lot of hypothesis testing. So, you know, the null hypothesis, the uh, working or active hypothesis, and then uh, setting confidence intervals. You know, how many standard deviations is this away? Okay, is that within the confidence interval of your hypothesis test to determine if something is significant or not? There's a whole lot of that type of stuff on the exams. And one of the other very common statistical concepts is probability testing and also like probability algebra, I would call it, where you have probability of A and B equals whatever, and then you'll have the probability of A or B, and you'll have a couple variables. And then when you have these probability of A or B plus probability of A and B type things, there's other ways that the algebra works to kind of come to the solutions. It's, it's actually kind of like a little puzzle, I think, kind of like playing Sudoku, but just line by line rather than a, on a grid. It can be kind of fun for some people, but you certainly have to be comfortable with probability testing and probability calculations for these exams. There's things like arithmetic mean, geometric mean, harmonic mean, and then of course you'll get into things like sharp ratio, trainer ratio calculations, but that's all simple algebra. You just have to memorize which variables go where in the division equation. Honestly, if you haven't started studying for the quant sections for any of the CFA exams, it's gonna be a lot of deja vu back to your high school or early college statistics classes. I don't know, for whatever reason for me, that section of the CFA exam seemed most similar to the information I had covered in, you know, in other educational backgrounds. So it's kind of fun in a way, but you certainly gotta do a lot of memorization there. In the corporate finance sections and in the accounting section, which the CFA exam calls financial reporting and analysis, there's a ton of math you use but it's all one or two variable division problems. So there's nothing in those sections that's gonna be much more than simple algebra, you know, seventh grade or sixth grade algebra, whenever you might've taken it. In the fixed income section, there's more algebra there, but you will run into a little more complex problems where you're calculating things like duration and convexity of bonds. So you'll just know that going into it, just requires a little bit more memor memorization, not all that much more in math knowledge. There is though on level two, a concept called binomial interest rate trees in the fixed income section, which Again, is even more like a Sudoku puzzle. I know I used that example already, but even more so like a Sudoku puzzle than what I mentioned earlier. And it's actually really fun once you get the hang of it, but I don't know if I would consider it math knowledge. You just have to know how to write out the prices of these bonds, and then you kind of draw a tree and do a little calculation based on each of the last nodes, what your new value is gonna be. I don't wanna undersell it, it's not easy. It's just that once you practice it as much as you should when you're studying for the CFA exams, like that one section, binomial interest rate tree calculations, I probably did for 30 hours or something like that because there are different variations of how that question can be asked. Once you do it that much, you're gonna be comfortable with how the math is calculated. It's not simple math. You have to be able to do math pretty quickly and in your head or at least write it down very quickly. But I think you can get it done with enough practice. I see a section in my notes here, and I'm gonna to be totally honest, I have no idea what this was. I'm sure I could do a quick Google search of it, but I just kinda of wanted to see if I could remember on, on my own right, and I can't. But it's all these calculations about this SEE, SSE, MSE type thing. And it's just a lot of simple algebra, but I don't even remember which section of the exam that may have come from. So you might run into stuff like that, I guess. On the level three exam, you will run into some early calculus when you're calculating AR models. You have to use things like the chain rule to find some unit roots or random walks. I did pretty poorly in calculus in college. So all of this all felt new to me when I was studying it. And it took me a lot more time for that reason. If you're in the same situation as me, just know that you're going to have to allocate more time to learning this, uh, these early calculus types of calculations to be able to pound them into your head enough to answer the questions right on the exam. I found them to be extremely difficult, but I was always terrible at calculus, so maybe they'll be relatively easy for you. If you have never taken calculus at all, I think they'll seem really hard. Either way, I think just knowing how tough it might be for you helps you budget how much time you're going to need to allocate to that section. Econ might have the most like algebra equation memorization of any other section when you're doing like GDP production functions, Cobb-Douglas, this and that, 
they're all just a lot of different economic variables like G, I, T for taxes, uh, S for savings. And you just have to remember in which types of functions you're calculating, each of those variables gets plugged in and in what order. None of it's more difficult than algebra. There's just a ton of these different calculations that the Institute puts in to make the exam hard. In the equities sections across all three exams, you're going to have a lot of like stock valuation equations. It's going to be similar to the fixed income types of equations where they're relatively short, but there are many different ones. And so you just need to know which uh, line items from the question you're reading apply to what variables in the formula and make sure you have the formula memorized so you can plug them in and get your answer. Then again, in equity, you're going to have all these calculations to find free cash flow from operations, free cash flow from financing, from investing, and a couple other things. And they're all really long. They're like 12 things you have to add up to calculate each one of these. Simple math, but just a lot of memorization of formulas. Some of the math you need to know to pass the derivative sections is the most difficult mathematics I've ever had to do in my life, and it was certainly the most difficult part of the CFA exams for me. There are a lot of different concepts in the derivative sections across all three. I think it's in all three tests. For this conversation, I want to focus on the pricing and the valuations of derivative contracts like futures and swaps. There's a good deal of calculus that gets involved in the uh, pricing and calculations of values of like currency swaps where I really can't explain the math to you, but you're gonna have like pages and pages of a solution to get to one answer. You'll have values of those derivatives changing based on the prices of underlying assets that the question might give you. And then each one of those values will have like different currency variables depending on how different currencies are fluctuating. If it's a currency swap, which was the single hardest type of question for me in the CFA program. To be honest with you, after doing it for maybe 30, 40 hours-ish for this one section, I ended up not being able to totally understand it and I kind of skipped a couple types of questions that I knew could come up on the exam. I don't remember if they ever actually did, but it just ended up not being worth my time anymore. And if you get to that scenario, sometimes you just have to bite the bullet and move on, especially if you're crunched for study time. I really hated to do it though, because I wanted to be comprehensive in my studies and I know I gave myself enough time to do so. The math was just like too much for me to wrap my brain around. In portfolio management, you have calculations like active risk, information ratio, alpha and beta of a portfolio. There can be some complications there because sometimes you don't know exactly which uh, parts of a security, because it'll give you a table with a bunch of securities in the portfolio and then like 20 statistics about each one. And you will have to remember which sections to pull from to calculate these formulas, but it's, it's algebra. You know, the math's not too crazy there again. In the alternative sections, there's a lot of things similar to what I kind of mentioned with fixed income and equities. You'll have valuation of commercial properties. You'll have you know, prices of commodities relative to certain economic variables. They're not simple algebra equations, unfortunately. You can have like six, eight, 10 variables in some of these and you gotta memorize the orders that they all come up in. So there's room for error, certainly, but no calculus, trigonometry, anything like that needed to uh, answer the alt sections. There's a good deal of questions on calculating the price of options. And if you have taken the series seven and 66, the regulatory licenses to provide investment advice in the United States, like I have, this will all be a very much review for you because it felt like half of those exams is just really simple little calculations on option prices. And there's some of that in the CFA exams, some simple, some a little bit more complex. But for me, none of that was all too tough. Just figure out if you are comfortable with calculating option prices or not. So hopefully you're noticing a theme here. None of the math needed on the CFA exams is overly complex. You don't need a degree in mathematics to be able to calculate it. But in my opinion, it's still hard. I think back to some of those specific formulas I might have mentioned them already here, but some things like active risk in the portfolio, there's a lot of parentheses and exponents and, and uh, you know divisors within those equations. You have to know which order to do them in, and the math isn't simple there, but if you spend enough hours practicing those types of questions, you'll be able to get it down at least well enough to answer some questions right. And if you spend enough time studying, you'll be able to get enough of them down to pass the exams, and obviously that's the ultimate goal here. So this conversation really just leads us back to the importance of what I've said is kind of the secret to passing the CFA exams, which is formula memorization, and listen to exactly how I recommend doing that in my video on the secret to passing the exams. But it's probably the most important part when it comes to this conversation around mathematics, because aside from statistics and some early calculus, and I'll just ignore the derivative section here because that is extremely tough. Aside from those things, if you can do basic algebra, you're going to be able to do 80% of the math needed. So it's really formula memorization that becomes the issue for people not being able to calculate the correct answers. I hope that's good news to some folks because if you're not super strong in math, that's probably okay as long as you spend more time than everyone else memorizing formulas. But I also am going to stand by the point that 
I don't think just anyone can pass the CFA exams. I've argued that point in my IQ needed to pass the CFA exams conversations or videos on this channel. And some people say, you know, anyone could pass the exams if they spent enough time. If all the math was very simple algebra, that could be true, but it's not. A lot of it, maybe 30% of it, requires many different variables to be memorized and applied in different ways in the algebra you're doing. And that's why I say not everyone could pass the exams even if they had enough time to study. The math is still tough, but like I said, you can do it if you put in the effort. I hope this video helps some of you out. Let me know if you have any questions down below. And as always, thanks for watching.